So a couple days ago, I made my first Rocket Racing video where I talked about my opinions and views on the game. That was after playing it for an hour or two though, so I was still relatively new. Hell, even at the end of the video I mentioned that my rank was Silver 1, so obviously I was still a beginner. But, after a couple days, I got to reach nearly Platinum now. And because I'm a higher rank and a little bit more skilled, it gives me some extra credibility. Now that I know what I'm actually talking about, now I can really speak about the things I may have liked, the things I may not have liked, and the things that I genuinely love. So you may look at this as a sort of redo to the last video, or a part two, if you will. This is just a slightly different perspective. Eyes are a little bit more intelligent this time. I'm more adapted to the game. I know what I'm talking about a little bit more. So, yeah, let's see how that goes. The first thing I want to do here is address my previous take on the drifting in this game. The drifting in this game is questionable. Like the hard power slide kind of drifting, I mean. See, from a beginner's perspective, it makes sense why the drifting is confusing. And that's because there's a feature with the drifting where when you are turning a corner, the game will automatically drift for you. But you can shoot a boost out of the side of your vehicle, which allows you to close a gap that much more. You know what I did? You know what I did there? I held it down. I held it down the entire time thinking that's what I was supposed to do. No, you're not supposed to do that. Speaking from a bit of a better perspective now, I've come to realize that while it's still flawed, the drifting is better than what meets the eye. You still need to be careful when using it, and it can be hard to control at times, but it's the fact that with a bit of intelligence and decent execution, you can remedy that somewhat. Meaning that it's a little bit hard to adjust to, but it is viable to use when it comes down to it once you understand how to use it. Now, another thing that my video addressed before that was just completely wrong is the track selection. Play the clip. The last thing I want to touch upon is track variety, and it's alright, I guess. I've played probably about, I would like to guess, 12 to 16 matches, and I feel like I've played most tracks at least twice, and unless there's a low amount of tracks in this game... It just seems like there's not a whole lot to offer in terms of unique environments. But maybe that has to do with your rank? I'm not sure. Keep in mind this is from a beginner standpoint. I'm just Silver 1. I barely touched it. To my credit, I acknowledge that I was most likely talking out of my ass and that ended up being true because the game is designed in a way where the tracks will change accordingly to your rank. Higher rank means harder tracks. Simple as that. So now that we're done ragging on my past self, I want to talk about the opinions of mine that have changed since the last video that doesn't include misinformation or just pure ignorance, such as the last two points. So, before I talked about how I was placing first 70-80% of the time and that it was more enjoyable when everything was kept close. Well, luckily, if you get your rank into the golds, don't worry, that problem is solved because by the time you're in gold... Things get a little bit more tricky, and you can't as easily just willy-nilly yourself into first place. Mistakes are unforgiving in this game. You can't just demolish your vehicle and expect to get a good placement. That's not going to happen anymore. As your rank gets higher, it requires you to be smart, precise, and aware of the track's design, layout, and possible shortcuts. I really like this idea. While it's not as chaotic as Mario Kart, and you could argue it's not quite as much fun, that's okay, because... If you are smart and perceptive of the things around you, you can take advantage of those things. If you have better knowledge than somebody, that might be the difference of getting in first or not getting in first. And so, you always have to pay attention to the design of your course to know, is this an optimal place to go full throttle boost? Is it not? Should I take this road or should I cut through this little opening in the side of this mountain? These are things you have to genuinely take into account. Should I follow the road or diverge off course where the path splits? Another thing you should take into account. Is it better to ride on the side of a wall or ceiling or just stay on the ground? Again, many things you have to take into account. And it's probably different for each player because every player has probably a different place where they shine. Some players would probably rather use the longer road to build up more boost for later. Some players would rather take the shortcuts as much as they humanly can, even if that means sacrificing future boosts that they can no longer use because of the shortcut. Again, these are things you have to calculate, and it's all the more power to you when you've played a track more than once, because I guarantee you there's likely a secret that you don't know about. There's nothing gameplay-wise I have to say here that I haven't already touched on in the other video that I already pretty much agree with, 
Yes, they borrowed things from Rocket League. Yes, it's not the most innovative thing in the world, but it works well, right? We touched upon that. Steering and everything like that still controls well. The gimmicks that we have in this game are still fun to utilize and everything like that. All of those I touched upon, and I stand by what I said, so we don't have to worry about those. Now, there is one problem that I didn't really have to worry about when I made the original video, because I hadn't seen this problem yet, but this problem became a thousand times worse the more I played. The matchmaking capabilities are anywhere between serviceable and abysmal. This part of the video right here is sped up to five times. Watch what happens here. All right. So it's looking for a match, right? Every second that passes is actually five seconds in real time. Just remember that. Okay. Loading. Loading. We're looking for a match. We're looking for a match. Yep. Not a problem there. What's going on? Where's my match? Where is my match? For over two minutes, I sat here, and you know where it put me? It put me back in the godforsaken lobby. Do you think I want to be here? Of course I don't. So I went to find myself a new match, and you want to know what happened? You want to know what happened? Here, I'll speed it up for you. Seventy-four seconds of a whole lot of nothing, and that wouldn't be a problem if it didn't happen to be like one, three, five races. The worst thing about this defect is I just came off of another one, just going into the lobby. So to go from defect to the lobby to load up another game to have another defect, yeah, pretty annoying. And the thing is, you could remedy this if there's a problem with players. Just make it so AI is in the game, and obviously you'll look at me and be like, yeah, but we don't want AI to affect your like skill percentage and shit, and. To that I just say, alright, just allow them in the game, but make sure you specify to each and every player they will not contribute to a greater or lesser percentage increase when present and are only there to fill the lobby. Boom. Done. Solved. I'm not sure if it has to do with maybe just an odd amount of players that are actually trying to play the game, because there's not a whole lot of players. You get maybe four to 5,000 a day, sometimes a little over, sometimes a little under, but while that's not the biggest amount of players ever, it's relatively easy to work with i don't think it should be that hard but aside from epic's matchmaking and how much i just ran over their balls for it it is still a really fun experience to play rocket racing in my opinion i think it's underrated and underappreciated and i know last video i ended it on the note of saying that it didn't deserve anywhere in the eights out of tens but i'd actually like to retract that i think it does deserve somewhere in the low eights it's fun it's thrilling it's more difficult than I anticipated it to be once you get into it. It may be a little bit flat and a bit too easy for you when you start out, but once you get past that point, then you'll begin to really have fun with this game. And so, yeah, I recommend it to anybody who's looking for a casual but fun racing game to play. So with that said, everybody, that's going to end the video here. Please share your opinions down below if you want to. It's your choice. But, um, yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. So have a wonderful day. Take care for now. See you in the next one. Goodbye.